Hey, I'm Francis Roberts, and today I'm going to keep working on my Astral Cauldron project. So let's go straight into Reaper and start making another song. Okay, so last time we had this first track that's got um, five sections. It's basically got this harp part, this pad, uh, these two square waves. And then this big drum thing. And I made that with my voice, and I think it sounds pretty cool. I like having some type of a unique sample in my songs. So, something that um, a lot of people sort of look down upon is using the same uh, project session to create uh, more than one song. And uh, I think for ease of uh, this demonstration, I am going to do that even though uh, I sort of agree that it's often better to make different songs in different projects. So I'm gonna leave some blank space um, at the end in case I want to extend this song. And I'm gonna go in here and start working on my second track. And um, in the interest of keeping this Astral Cauldron project uh, somewhat coherent and cohesive, I'm going to use mostly the same sounds in each song, and I'm going to try to use composition techniques and uh, different musical ideas to differentiate the tracks instead of using different instruments. So um, that'll be a nice challenge. All right, um, I think in the first song I started with a harp part. So uh, for this next one, I think I'm going to start with a pad, and I'm going to try to choose an exciting uh, chord progression to work with. Oh, you know what else is if this is track two, oops, what am I doing? That's track one and then track two is here. Um, I want to figure out what key I'm ending up in. Maybe I'll end on that chord. That's actually going to be kind of cool. Make it a bit longer. And that chord is an E, sort of an E major seven, um, which could be um, kind of a fun first chord to start with. Uh, we could call that our new key. Um, and if we uh, hear that chord after, after this progression, completes itself, we'll get an idea if, um, get an idea of whether or not that's a good starting chord. Um, because once this track ends, I like that, uh, I like it when the second track on an album or the track following the previous track, um, sort of subscribes to the harmonic implications of what was just happening. Almost like treating that as a modulation. So now if we have pause, I think that's a little bit weird, uh, just right off the bat. Uh, I think that this um, doesn't really imply a modulation to uh, this as our new key center. But um, it does sort of um, let us go to an E minor, I think. Yeah, I actually like that. And that's kind of fun because the first track starts in E flat minor. So starting the second track in E minor uh, creates this, uh, this sort of sense of urgency, like uh, upward movement. I, I, I actually um, really like the idea of doing that. I'm excited to try to uh, write this and maybe make each song in a different key.
that's a good starting point. Let's hear what that sounds like as a loop. I think that, um, Having that same melody in the accompaniment, but uh, with different uh, chord implications is exciting to me. Um, I always try to find stuff that's like exciting or stimulating in some way, um, even if it's a simple accompaniment part. Um, I think that by focusing your attention on those little details, you can add a lot of value to a simple piece of music. So uh, let's hear this again. Um, I've also shortened uh, these notes so that uh, Essentially, we have whole notes every time instead of just like a dotted whole note, or I guess no, it wasn't dotted, it was just two and a whole notes tied, right? Um, let's hear this. That chord needs to keep going. Um, I think that's just how how life is uh, today. Um, sort of a sense of longing, uh, and this is going to be our our big loop. I'm going to do all of these the same way, just very ambient, um, get lost in this uh, music kind of a thing. And while this plays back, I'll start thinking about uh, what to do next. Um, maybe, um, maybe a, a drum groove. Yeah, I already sort of hear... with a square wave. Rhythmically, it's 
bothering me a little bit though. Um, I think that maybe my tempo should be different. Uh, a little bit faster. I'm gonna try going up to 100 and see how this feels. Um, and maybe these should be um, some type of a triplet grid. Maybe. Um, if we use a triplet grid, maybe we can try this drum idea again and see how it feels. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Huh. Oops. this feels um, coming in here a lot of this is just listening to music uh, deciding what you like and you can't really do that unless you listen to it in real time so let's be in it for the long haul and do it right I'm starting to imagine um, one of these kind of things on here. Adding a little bit of thunderous low end to that. Um, I like that idea. I'm just going to do that and I'll change it later if I want. So now we need um, I'm going to um, start by keeping track of what my actual notes are. Uh, gosh. And um, treating these as kind of a melody. Um, these are notes from these cor chords that I initially had, and I'm basically focusing on those top uh, notes with one of the square leaves. And um, let's see if it sounds good before I change it. I'm doing this to um, have a sense of. Uh, like a frame of reference for writing this melody. These notes are in the chords, so um, I won't have to remember what key I'm in or anything because I'm doing this all um, from the back of my hand. So let's just see what it sounds like. <laughs> I actually really like that. Um, maybe they can trade off since they're left and right. Let's see if that feels good. Yeah, I really like that a lot actually. Okay, so this loop can continue and um, I'm gonna bring in the harp now. I really want to try to use pretty much the same instruments throughout this whole piece, um, whatever album or EP I'm making. 
and I'll go back periodically and make sure that nothing sounds too similar. It's pretty similar. Uh, I might need to add another sound. Um, maybe give each song its own little fun hat to wear. Um, I'll come back and do that later. This will be my demos. Um, hmm. Again, I just want to keep track of what these notes are. Um, and um, this time I'll do this. Uh, arpeggios. Is this too fast? Only time will tell. Um, let's just hear about how fast this arpeggio is. Whoo! It's fast, but it sounds kind of cool. Um, maybe even like entrancing. Uh, whoops. Let's see how this feels. Yeah, um, I'm into it. One of those things that I don't think I would have um, written intentionally, but... Uh, here we are, just sort of guessing and ending up with something that sounds kind of nice. And then, as I recall, this... Um, yeah, okay. Those are different chords. And you'll notice that I'm shortening these out and leaving those notes in for reference instead of deleting them right away, just because I want to follow the same chord voicings. Um, duplicating there, so. think is going to lead us to a, a place where um, a new idea needs to happen otherwise we're gonna get really really bored um, and I'm gonna to try to write like a, a nice little um, harp interlude maybe it'll even lead back to itself uh, Arpeggiate these a little bit. Okay, I like that right away. This is the kind of thing that would be easier to play on a keyboard, but I don't have my MIDI controller hooked up right now, so I'm gonna draw it out. 
Let's just try that. Um, this badly needs to be humanized a little bit. That'll be the last chord here. And then if I go right back into that other part, it will be kind of ominous and evil sounding. This should be a different chord. I'm here. Um, this could be pretty intense as far as the length of silence, but diving right back into this uh, powerful part after that long of a pause could be pretty cool, especially if we put like a special effect. Let's hear that. That third chord should change. We need it to feel like it's going to a E minor there. Um, See if a quick cheating dominant chord feels good. I also feel like, like I said, this this chord here is not good. I want it to be unsettling. That one just sounds a bit like a mistake. could work. Don't make it happen twice.
like that. I, I actually also don't like this third chord still. Ugh. Maybe that works. I like that more. Apply um, where we're going a little bit more strongly. It's kind of weird, but um, ooh, you know what I could do is put that in the melody. Yeah, I actually think that works. I'm gonna do that twice here, and then. As weird as it is, maybe I'll work if I fade out again the same way. And now um, the problem that we're facing here is that track one and two really do sound too close to each other. Um, which makes them sound like they're the same project, but uh, maybe they're too similar or maybe they actually feel like they're two pieces of the same track. And we could do a very long track, which is um, not inappropriate, but um, I like the idea of giving each one of these its own sort of um, silly hat to wear and to do that um, I think what I'm going to do is um, come up with an instrument that I can inject into each of these to give it its own um, sense of sense of self um, maybe even like some sort of a bizarre ambiance um, this might seem like an absurd thing to do but even just like a gnarly deep sound actually check this out this is kind of a fun idea baseball ambiance something like that something like that <laughs> that was like a five out of ten as far as the quality of the burp um, and, uh, what I'm going to do is, <laughs> oh, geez, this is disgusting. Okay. 
Um, let's see how this feels. Basically what I'm doing is I just wanted some kind of a gnarly um, sound with a lot of little transients to <laughs> slow down uh, significantly and create some type of a um, really gnarly deep ambience. Yeah, okay. One voice. And then give it a lot of reverb. That's the rules. Maybe that's too deep of a sound. I should probably also obey note offs. Okay, let's see how this feels as a beginning to track one. Huh, you know what? Let's just do it from here. kind of cool. Um, I could live with it. Let's see what it sounds like if I choose a higher pitch. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm pitching it down so much that um, that I'm, uh, my EQ is doing too much work now. Yeah. Okay, let's just do that. And then um, um, we'll do another sample for the next track. Dark Ambiance 2. For this one, um, Maybe I'll just go like. And I'll use that as my sample. Um, maybe that needs to be louder to begin with, but whatever. Um, same general idea. Give it some sort of a background ambiance and hopefully um, get some mileage out of. Oh, that's the wrong track. That was pretty good. Um, one voice, a bay note offs, and a lot to be shifted. And I guess I should probably. Start it a little bit later and fade it down. Yeah, okay. Let's see how that feels. Is this looping? Yeah, loop, okay. Yeah, it's like different monsters almost. I kind of like that.
maybe like a these could have like some kind of a really horrifying like ping pong echo. Um, let's see. <laughs> Does this work? Oh, you know, the stereo bounce one might be better. Use a fancy plugin. I try to avoid these, but um, this is like my favorite tempo sync ping pong thing. This is the best plugin ever made. I'm just gonna say that. Give it a little bit of noise and saturation. Let's see how that sounds in the first one. Yeah. Ooh. This one's not in the reverb yet. Oops. Wrong. I did that wrong. Shoot. You know what? Just because the second one's focusing on a pad, I might just I might just choose a different pad. Yeah, I want to avoid this a little bit, but uh, it's sounding too similar, so I'll choose uh, some other pad. Which one? How about? Um. Cuddly pad, what does that sound like? I like that a lot. It leaves more space for the ambiance. Pretty happy with that. I think we're on the right track, and maybe we'll just change one sound for each song, and we'll do track three next time. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, and let me know if you learned something in the comments. I'll see you next time.